Today, we're gonna to go over the Festool TSC55KEB. Now I'm gonna tell you if it's for you or if it's not. Let's get into it. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Cody from Mr. 4 AM Builds and this is my new Festool TSC55KEB. TSC, that means it's a track saw. The 55 means it has 55 millimeters of cutting depth. Those of us that live in the US, it's approximately two and one eighth inches. The KEB stands for three things. K is for the anti-kickback that it has. E is for the electronic speed control so that it revs itself a little bit so that it doesn't burn the wood. And the B is the electronic braking. So when you let off of the trigger on this thing, boom, it slows itself down. Just like that too, boom. The kit that I bought came with a 55 inch rail. It came with this box. It comes with two 5.2 amp hour batteries and a few other small odd and ends that you can use. Let's take a look inside of it. The saw comes in a number three sustainer. As we open the case, you see they have some codes you can scan to go to the Festool app. The quick startup guide shows you how to change the batteries. And actually I really like this. It shows you how the saw nestles right down in there. This saw comes with two 5.2 amp hour batteries, which on the side you can see they have an indicator that lets you know how much life they have left. When running both batteries, it is 36 volts and runs at 5,200 RPMs, or you can run it with just the bottom battery and it will run at 3,800 RPMs. You'll notice on the side of the saw, there's these little cams. And what that is for is, is that when you put it on the rail, these pinch on the rail. So we need to adjust these. And how we do that is simply by spinning the top of it and it will bring this over. So once we set it down, On the track, we can slide it and see that that's pretty loose. So we'll just give a little tighten. That's pretty good right there. And we'll snug the back. And I can see that that's too tight. So then I'll loosen it a little bit. And that flows pretty smooth. That way we know that there's no shake when it's on the rail. To tilt your saw side to side, you simply loosen this nut in front, loosen the one in back, and then it will slide out to 45 degrees. It can also slide to 47 degrees by simply pulling this little knob on the back and it will let it go over that extra two degrees. And then that little click you just heard, that means it's back in. And once I pull it back, it'll only go to the 45 degree mark. And here, if I need to go to negative one, like if I'm cutting against a wall or something, you flip this part out and that will let it cut this way at a negative one degree angle. And then when you just lift it back up, that snaps back in and then you're back into the zero and 45. Setting the depth for your cut is very, very simple. That's all you have to do, squeeze this mark here on the side and slide it to where you want it to go. There is two marks. The FS is for when it's on the Festool guide rail system. This mark down here is for when it's sitting flat on the floor. One of the reasons that this track saw makes such excellent cuts is because on the edge of the rail, there's what's called a splinter guard. It's like a plastic rubbery piece that goes on there. And then when you cut, it actually is a zero clearance edge to it. And what that does is as the saw is going through, it holds the wood fibers down. So it leaves it a nice clean cut. And I actually have a brand new rail that I've been saving for just this video. So we're going to cut a piece of wood and then we're going to see exactly how that splinter guard comes off. You can see on the new reel how wide that is because we haven't cut it yet. And then this reel I've cut a few times, so it's zero clearanced out. So let's cut this one and see how it does. That's an accessory as well. I love that thing. As you can see, it trimmed off just a little piece. So now I know that this rail is perfectly zero clearance to my saw. If and when this does wear out, I was able to find them on Amazon from Festool Direct. I think 197 inch one was something like $49. So they're not too terribly expensive to replace. 
now that we have the splinter guard dialed in on the rail, to set the outer splinter guard, that's all you have to do is lower this and then drop this down and you want that to be flush on the wood and then you can tighten it up. In my opinion, one of the coolest features about this saw is the anti-kickback. And what that is, is this piece right here, it's offset of the blade, so this will ride on the rail. So as it's cutting, the rail's riding right there, and that's gonna stay in there. And if this were to come down, it's gonna stop the blade immediately. Not like a saw stop, it doesn't have that technology, but it's gonna shut that blade down with that brake very, very quickly. The neat part about this feature is that even when the saw is live, it'll let you start it without it. And as soon as it goes up, now it's activated. Changing the blade on this Festival track saw is very simple. First thing I do is I take the batteries out. Then you're gonna lift up this handle right here that says fast fix. And in there, you're gonna pull out your tool. Then I'm gonna set the depth down past an inch and a quarter. And then what I'm gonna do is when I push this down, it's gonna lock into there. And what that does is it's gonna lock out our trigger. It's gonna lock out our arbor shaft and our blade right here where I can get to the nut to unscrew this. I'm also gonna pop that splinter guard out. Blade comes out, and then you can see here, it says that this is a yellow, uh, the yellow blade for the fine cut. All the Festool um, blades are marked, and it even shows inside that sustainer what color is made for what. Put it back in. The grooves are on the back of the nut and on the shaft. Tighten it back up, and this is all very easy because I don't even have to, there's no break I'm holding on to or anything like on the, the other, some of the other compact ones. Tighten it up. I'll readjust that when I put it on the rail. We're good to go. To zero the saw out properly, I'm gonna use this fine adjustment here on the side. So I'm gonna set the right hand side to zero because that means it's when it's on flat wood and then I'm going to push it down. And I can see here that I have a little bit of blade movement so then I can reach over and I can adjust how far that goes down. And just that little turn, I barely touch it now. Now I know that it, that, that is exactly where I wanna be. Besides the safety features of the saw, I also really like the dust collection that it provides. It has Bluetooth batteries, so if you have a Festool dust extractor, when you turn this on, it will automatically kick on the dust extractor and it will run for a little bit after you shut it off. It also comes with a bag that you can use, which Festival says collects up to 90%. But what I've been doing is, is on the back of the little quarter turn piece, is I just have a two inch rubber fern co, and I just took my shop vac, and that's hooked right up to it, and I just plug it, push it in there, and that's been staying good enough for anything that I've been using it for. For that inlet on the back, it uses a 27 millimeter hose that snaps in on the inside, or a 36 millimeter hose that goes on the outside. Not sure what all that means, but this is about inch and three quarters, slides into a two inch fern co, works pretty good. And also to help with the dust, I got this off of eBay. Now it's gonna help cover up that arbor shaft. One of the other things that really helps with dust collection on this saw is, is how much thinner the blade is. Normally the blade on these old saws was 2.2 millimeters, and this new blade on this saw is down to 1.8 millimeters. I really didn't think it was gonna be that much of a difference, but I found out that it, it really is. It creates a lot less dust. The saw has more power as it's going through, and the batteries seem to last even longer. This saw is also capable of plunge cutting, and the neat part about that is, is they give you this little clip that slides on the rail, and you tighten it down, it keeps your saw it gives it a stopping point so it can't go any farther back, but it also keeps the saw from lifting up as you're plunging through the wood. So now that we've went over the Festool's quirks and features, do I think it's for everybody? No, I don't. I do feel it's a very expensive tool, probably more money than a lot of people wanna spend on a lot of things. For the $900 you're spending on this, you can get a very good circular saw and a straight edge and get 
pretty close to just about the same thing. This is nice because of the repeatability. And if you wanna get into the Festool ecosystem, uh, this is where you wanna be. They have a lot of great tools. I know they're expensive, but sometimes you get what you pay for. I know Milwaukee also has a very nice one, but I really do enjoy using this. Personally, this is easy for me because it's convenient and I like it, but it may not be for you. So I appreciate you watching. I hope you learned something, or at least you were entertained. In the meantime, get out there, buy cool tools, build cool stuff, tell your friends about it. See ya. Changing. Change. That hurt my knee. If you have a fast tool dust strip, dust, ah, Jesus.